Uh, Joe Sugg. Hello. I mean, from making videos in your bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> there were kosher videos. Yeah. Uh, YouTube videos <laughs> to, you know, um, writing a book. Yeah. And then you did a bit of dancing. Yeah. And then you went on the West End. Yeah. And now you're in a Hollywood movie. Yeah. It's just, I do you know what, I'm just riding the wave. I'm riding the wave whilst I can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. Are you just beside yourself with happiness about all this? It's, it's, it does seem like everything I do is always like a pinch myself moment. And the, the, the thing is as well, it's, it's not just me like jumping at everything that I can do. It's like it just comes in and be like, yep, do it, do it, do it. It's like, these are all things that I've sort of really had to think about doing as well. I mean, for this though, was it was a bit of a no brainer because I've always been such a huge fan of Aardman in general. Um, I used to want to work for them as a kid. I grew up um, in a very small village and to keep me entertained I used to go to animation club every Saturday morning because I watched Wallace and Gromit The Wrong Trousers once and I was like fascinated by it. So I then gave it a go myself and I wanted to become an animator. Um, so to now be sat here as part of their new movie is, is a real, real honour. So did you meet Nick Park? I did, I met Nick Park. Was it an embarrassing moment? Did you keep it together? No, it's, it's fine. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with meeting people that I've really looked up to. I always kind of think, I don't know, it's, it, it, was a, it was a kind of like inside, internal, like, year, like age 11 me being like, oh my word, this is the guy who makes all your favorites. Um, but it, I kept it cool, calm and composed. I said, look, Nick, if you need me any time for anything, just let me know. <laughs> was it on a level with David Attenborough? Because you've done a few yeah, cool people it's, recently. Do you know what? It's been, a, it's been a real solid week of meeting, meeting childhood heroes uh, and just heroes in general. Um, yeah, it, I mean, they're, they're both two people that are so talented at what they do. And, um, and something, there's something really, like, I don't know, charming about their work, I think. They've got <laughs> Very really, like, charming. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. How does it feel that you know Pizza Boy is going to be someone's hero when they're younger? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> they, they could be. They could be a, a campaign to make a whole spin-off just on the Pizza Boy. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> so but, the big question is: pineapple on or off? Uh, I'm pineapple on. Really? Yeah. I think I don't mind it. I don't mind it because I quite like the sweet and savoury together sometimes. You're. I can tell you're not. You're not, are you? My dad takes cans to restaurants, opens them, pops them on. Really? True story. That's dedication. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Does so it mean he takes a tin opener as well? Um, he always gets a little the ring pool, pool. pool job. Yeah. And what if the ring pool comes off? See, you've thought about these what things. What does he do then? He would just go up to the kitchen and try and find a can opener. Good. I like him. I like your dad. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you been asked about pizza though, on this press tour? Do you know what? I think this is the second time. Really? I think so, yeah. It's not actually been that... that they've kind of avoided it, I think. Have people seen the film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and also in this film, the, the farmer's saving up to buy something. This yep. ultimate tractor. Yes. As a kid, did you put money into a box and want to save it for something? Uh, I did. I tried. Uh, I never... I always failed. It was mainly like um, PlayStation games and things like that that I really wanted. Um, but there was... Uh, I, I went travelling when I was 18. And I had to save up a lot for that, and then it got I got like halfway for Australia, and then ran out, and then I was like, oh, what do I do now? I could either like go home, or continue on to New Zealand and have like the the best time. I, I back back then I was still a roof thatcher, so I was like, this is it. This is my one chance to explore a bit of the world before I then I'm on a roof for the rest of my life. So I called uh, my parents and been like, is there any way you can like just get me through like the rest of it and I'll pay you back. I remember I, I paid them back, but it took a long time, a long, long time. Mine was one of those Mr. Frosty machines with the ice. Oh yeah, see? Why don't I just get some ice and just mush it myself? Yeah, <laughs> because it was so much cooler. Did you see the advert? The yeah. Advert they... it's, it's kids' toys adverts that always make you want, they're, they're very clever. Those adverts make you want that thing, whatever it is. Talking about the uh, thatching on the roof, do you ever think, oh, I want to go up there again one day? Definitely. I think I, I, it's a weird scenario because I I wasn't at a point where I wanted to quit my job. Like I loved my job so much. It just so happened that YouTube became so big that it then sort of, I just thought I'd need to jump on this and make the most of it. Because I thought it'd last a year max and then I'd be back on the roof again. So I thought, I said to my uncle, who's my boss, I said, just let me, you know, I want to be able to do this for a little bit. Just give it everything I've got and see where I can take it. And then, you know, I'll be back. And uh, sorry, Uncle Gary, I'm still, I'm still not back yet. You, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the Sean the Sheep movie instead, yeah. <laughs> Doing all sorts. <laughs>